going to talk about Simplex Chat. Uh, I, I founded this as a startup, and uh, it's a private and secure messaging platform that's different from, I believe, all, either everything or almost everything that exists by not having any kind of user identifiers. So I'll explain what it actually means. And I, and I know that uh, there is a lot of interest from Monero community to this uh, product, which we're very like excited about. So because when, when somebody suggested that I make a talk at this conference, I say, well, what do I have to do with Monero? <laughs> so it's just like, uh, why it's even relevant for the, for the community. So I, I'm, I'm really excited to, to talk to you about that. And that's great that it's relevant. So I, a few words about myself. So I uh, have uh, done some things with open source that was successful. So for example, my open source library became one of the foundational blocks for JavaScript being used by a majority of JavaScript applications. I also led several engineering teams and Simplex Chat as a company was founded in 2021. But the, as a project that started before that, we probably started thinking about design as early as like late 2019. And some of the ideas that came into it are probably much older than that. So, so if you want, you can uh, you can join the group. So this QR code will lead you to to the group I specifically created for the conference. You can join later and ask any questions. You can try how the app works. And if you don't catch the QR code, uh, it, it's very simple. You just go to our website slash Monercon. It will redirect you to the link that you can use in the app to join the group. So a pressure. But if you have some questions you wanted to ask and didn't ask, you can do that later, and I'll show it again in the end. So, so at first, like, why why do we say privacy matters at all, right? Because we know that majority of people in this world would say uh, we have nothing to hide, really, and we, we, they can have our data and things like that. Uh, I honestly see this kind of denial of value of privacy as the opposite side of the same coin. Majority of people in this world are hard at work to make a living to feed their kids and they really don't have time for complex technological solutions or anything. But but if you talk about like safety, like probably one of the most inspiring stories on the value of privacy of connections is this um, uh, story of a man who was, uh, what, what's, uh, what's his name? I, I kind of struggle to remember, frankly. Uh, uh, Sorry, anyway, so watch the movie Mauritanian, or at least Google the Mauritanian. The man was arrested after a single phone call uh, to his relative in Pakistan on the basis of him having some old and uh, connection in his youth with uh, Al Qaeda. So he learned severe any ties since and moved to Germany and left happy life there, but he was arrested and held uh, in Guantanamo prison for 15 years, purely on the basis of his association, right? So and we see similar things happening so like in 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 satellite countries right so like like not in russia it's quite routine news that telegram channel admins are arrested in moscow it's not even surprising to anyone but the, the latest news here it's, it's, it's an old news but still uh like it happened in the uk right so just police arrested a journalist after some house awesome internet chat board so unfortunately this kind of freedom of expression is is clearly something that's not that's not granted even in, in many civilized countries but it's not just that so we we know that oh i think the thesis here is that any kind of user identification is not really compatible with privacy right so facebook and whatsapp jointly amass hundreds of megabytes of data about each user on average and having this data understanding the online behaviors understanding the online connections generates revenue which is depends on how you count but it's slightly less or slightly more than 50 dollars per year per user and ultimately the users pay this money right via higher prices they pay or via necessary purchases they make and that's what something i think majority of people in the world don't understand that not having privacy of their connections actually costs them real money and i think it's it's pretty conservative assumption that we're talking about like hundred dollars a year per user because obviously Facebook doesn't charge users Facebook charges companies and companies have to somehow earn this money to justify this expense right and the only way to earn this money is by selling more than they could otherwise do without advertising so it's either ads that generate more sales that wouldn't happen otherwise or 
ads or some machine learning model that results in people high in, paying high prices to online retailers. So, so, so our view is that like lack of privacy costs people some real money, much more than they would be comfortable paying. Like, I don't think the majority of people would be comfortable in the knowledge that Facebook and WhatsApp combo costs them hundred dollars a year. So, so we've been thinking uh, pretty early on about the design. So, like networks, like naturally rely on some concept of the identity. Whether we use phone numbers or email or just some numbers or some public keys or anything to identify the users, that's that seemed a, a fundamental quality of the network design. So, when we initially, like a year ago, when I came to Reddit and say, "Hey, we have a new design that doesn't require any kind of user identity," like the, the response on Reddit was, "Well, man, you're lying. Right? It's like you have to have identity to deliver messages." how else can it even like conceivably work because clearly you need something to identify a user to the network so the network can even function so we we, we didn't arrive to the design of simplex chat overnight it was some kind of thinking that started from the point okay if the identity is the problem how can we design a network that doesn't have identities at all and there was no clear blueprint how to do it. So we thought, all right, so if you put, put an identity on the user, it's create a problem. What if instead of assigning identities to users, we kind of assign them to the connections? It's It was the kind of like almost uh, idea, right? Like it wasn't even a solution or technical design. Uh, it wasn't even clear how it's possible initially, but at least what's clear from this diagram. So assigning an identity to connection makes network a pack, right? Because you no longer see how many users even exist in the network, right? You see the number of connections, but you don't really see who they connect. If you if you drop users from this picture and all you're left is like dumped connections, then it's kind of looks more private. But how can it conceivably work on, on a technical on a technical basis right so that that wasn't clear so we we're thinking all right so we probably need something in between right because even though like many people like peer-to-peer -peer designs and believe they fundamentally more private i kind of not sure i agree with this premise we have comparison with peer-to-peer -peer networks and there's a questionable uh, improvement in privacy just from the fact that they appear to peer and also peer to peer networks usually don't work for asynchronous messaging and everybody wants asynchronous message by asynchronous i mean you can send the message when your communication peer is not online so yeah and so after some soul searching we arrived to this design uh, of having some sort of relays between actual communication peers which uh, can pass messages in one direction only and this design was only for simplicity's sake. We, we we considered obviously the design that where relay can pass messages in both directions, but it just seemed more complex. Uh, and having a clear roles uh, like sender, broker, recipient in a connection and the connection being unidirectional seemed a more interesting building block that's simpler than traditional message and broker design, right? Which have to maintain connection in both directions. So it kind of gives us unidirectional network when messages can be passed in one direction only and relays don't really know who are a communication parts, at least from the application layer. That's, by the way, one of the very common sources of criticism that this design by itself doesn't protect transport information, right? So like relays obviously can see IP addresses and IP addresses represent transport identity of the users. And that's all true, but it's also true for all other, for all other communication, network, communication network designs and uh, it, other communication networks have both transport identity and application level identity. But in this case, we protect application level identity. And there are lots of known solutions to protect and transfer level identities. So, so it doesn't seem worse. It seems better than the status. It seems better than the status quo. Uh, and obviously, it's com it's more complex, right? So, and that was one of the points. And and this is a, like the most simplified version of design we could arrive to. But at the same time, it achieves a very high level of application level anonymity for the participants, right? So you have effectively four different identifiers for each connection, not not two. Uh, so one ident sorry, two two identifiers, two identifiers. And for, for duplex connection, for bidirectional conversation, you have four, right? So you have address to send messages, you have another address to retrieve those messages, you have 
and and that's to address this existing niche connection direction. So if you look at this blue arrows, what Ellis and Bob perceive as a conversation is in reality a composition of two messaging queues uh, that that also provide the quality that there is no uh, identifiers. So even if the TL, even if TLS connection is compromised inside this connection there are no identifiers in common or ciphertext in common in a in, a, in each direction right so like this traffic that arrives to address 1.2.s it looks differently from the traffic that uh, like escapes the server from address 1.2.r so effectively identifier is different and actual traffic is different because relay effectively acts as an onion routine by applying additional level of encryption on the way out so whoever monitors the network, even if they somehow compromise TLS, they would not be able to see from the traffic analysis who talks to whom here, right? So they would only see time and correlation. But because the network is synchronous, communication parties can agree different times to be online, and time and correlation also becomes problematic, right? <laughs> So, so yeah, that, that's the design. I, and however complex it looks, we build uh, a very usable product. I strongly believe that uh, privacy without usability is simply impossible because if, if something is not usable, uh, then there will be very few people using it. And as a result, the privacy will be less. It will be some sort of a ghetto for people seeking privacy as opposed to mass market network, which provides privacy by default. So we, from the very beginning, believe that we have to be as usable as mass market messengers eventually and actually more usable than that but that's a very long journey it's very hard it's, it's a huge amount of work really so whatever we've built still is not reaching the level of usability of telegram or whatsapp and in some cases even signal maybe but i think we're kind of punching as, as high as we can and lots of users are very excited about the usability of the product so discovering users is still impossible it's coming and uh Obviously, there is some friction in establishing an initial connection, like you have to somehow pass the link or you have to scan the QR code during the video call, for example, like the QR code I shared in the beginning of the talk, right? But still, it's not as simple as punching in the phone number of your contact. So we have some plans for that. And uh, the next question that arises, okay, so how do we address this lack of transfer dynamics? Because again, going back to this design, the huge uh, downside of like relays are chosen by the message recipients. So like this relay one is chosen by Ellis and relay two is chosen by Bob. And because they choose it, they can obviously self-host them or somehow else control, which means that Bob via his relay can observe Ellis's AP address and uh, Ellis via her relay can observe Bob's AP address. This is by no means worse than what happens with peer-to-peer -peer networks, right? People can also observe their IP addresses and people have to use some uh, overlay networks to protect it, like Tor, for example, or VPN providers or anything, right? So, and obviously if if a messaging network is coupled with Tor, then it's an interesting proposition, right? So like, for example, like Kutch does that. But there is also downside to coupling transport layer to application layer, and we decided not to go this way. So we, we kind of, Made made application very composable with Tor, but not be, don't believe that we should embed Tor. So so and that's the answer to this problem, right? So that's the next uh, that's the destination. Very simplex network will be evolving, effectively becoming a two hop mixed network rather than one hop uh, low latency. So and uh, so in this case, in each message being passed from one party to another two relays will participate uh, and you can follow through like blue arrows right so like ellis sends the message to relay five and relay five forwards it to relay two and relay two forwards it to bob and bob uses another set of relays right it sends messages to relay five accidentally being the same as alice chose but it forwards to relay one and relay one is so in this case, Alice chose relay one, both chose relay two, and they both chose relay five as outgoing relay, right? Which is which is completely uh, coincidental. I see questions already coming, and I'll come to that. So yeah, please send in a group. So uh, so that kind of protects IP addresses, but it also has additional benefits because 
not only it protects API addresses, it creates some sort of session isolation. So while Relay 5, like, like first hop relay can observe API addresses and transferred, it doesn't know how many messaging queues on the destination relay are being used. It can see obviously the total number of messages through the just traffic volume, but it cannot see the number of messaging queues because there is an end-to-end -end encryption between Bob and Relay 1, and equally there is end-to-end -end encryption between Alice and Relay 2. So it does act like an onion routing network. When Alice knows the destination relay, she doesn't trust destination relay, she delegates passing messages to Relay 5, but she also doesn't trust Relay 5 to know how many messaging queues she uses on Relay 2, and Relay 5 doesn't need to have this information. So the only way they can see the composition of the network is via collusion, like if those relays have collusion between each other, right? So, but it's still a controllable risk because each party chooses both relay to receive the message and relay to send the message. Uh, and it, this design actually seems better than Tor for some applications because those relays are not stateless, they're stateful, they can hold messages. They both are asynchronous. So for example, if destination relays goes down, Alice wouldn't be wasting her traffic trying to deliver messages. She will just put it on the first relay and the first relay will be trying to reach the second relay. So Alice doesn't even need to be online for this to happen. So it reduces the traffic into this design. And it also doesn't still doesn't require any central authorities or uh, centralized register or any global consensus on what relays exist in the network because relays don't choose relays, right? Like like happens in Tor, right? You have to have the least of all relays when you construct circuits. So, and mixed networks also kind of require some knowledge of participating nodes. In this case, relays are chosen by users. There is no centralized registry or any kind of global register of relays. So network can function as completely isolated segments uh, connecting at will if users want to connect, but without any global reachability of relays or users, which seems beneficial to Tor. Also, having two hops compared with more hops feels more usable from the latency point of view. Uh, and in any case, it, it still composes with Tor, and if users want to further protect their transferred information, they can still connect to the first stage relays via Tor, uh, like paying penalty in terms of latency and additional like traffic, et cetera, et cetera. Right. But but again, this is this is this is application level mixed network which focused on passing messages and not just creating TCP circuit as Tor does, right? This is not a criticism of Tor by any means. It's just like it's just even though this uses the same principle as Tor does, it's not in competition with Tor because it's not transport network. It's it's application level message passing network. So yeah, that's that's where we're gonna go uh, with the design, and that's the story. So I think I'm happy.